even if your phone is no longer getting over-the-air firmware updates from your OEM, Google is still busy working on new features, bug fixes, and security improvements that everyone using Android can install. But they have to be installed manually, and I can show you how that's done toward the end of this video. But first, let's actually take a look at the new changes to Android that Google has just began to roll out. Once you have updated your Google Play Services application to version 25.44, then you'll notice that you can actually back up and restore your SMS Retriever preferences within Android. Now, SMS Retriever is not actually a user-facing setting though, and instead, it's an Android API feature that enables applications to automatically read one-time password verification codes from SMS messages. There have been some updates to various system management services that will help to improve the stability of the operating system. Google Wallet has removed the Cards QR feature for those who are living in or who are currently visiting Brazil. We're told that the Google Play Services application now supports an integrated live video experience for those times when you need to make an emergency phone call. There's also been a new change for those who use parental controls, as you'll now see additional information to clear things up if you ever decide to block the Gemini app through Family Link. And last up for this specific app update, both Google and third-party app developers now have some new features to help them support Maps-related processes within their applications. The Google Play Store had a very small update last week, but if you are able to install this, then it will bring you up to version 48.8. .8. And you'll now find a new subscription center that will display all of your active subscriptions and the play points that you've earned this year. And there's also an interesting new feature included with this update that will allow you to uninstall apps from the Play Store listing on your phone. But it says that this can be done without using the device itself. So I think this is telling us that a smartphone version of the Google Play Store, meaning this is not available via the web portal right now, but once you have updated your Google Play Store app to this version mentioned here today, then you'll be able to uninstall apps that are currently on your tablet or on a secondary smartphone that is active on your account. So this feature seems to suggest that we'll be able to remove apps from other devices that are connected to our account, all from the Google Play Store application that we have here on our smartphone. Definitely something that I will begin to look for immediately after I finish up with this video. Google is currently working to make it easier to find all of these updates, but not all phones have that new Google System Services section within the Settings application. So for now, the best way to manually install these updates is actually twofold. Firstly, you're going to want to launch the settings application and then do a search for the word update. That should return at least one result labeled Google Play System Update and you can tap into that, find that entry, and then have it manually check to see if your device is eligible for that new update. If it is, you'll see a blue download and install button from right here. We tap it. The update is usually very small, very quick to install. And then once it's done, we tap on the restart now option to reboot our phone. If you did have an update waiting and you just installed it, I highly recommend you go back into the settings, find that same menu, and then do another manual check to see if you are eligible for the next update. Since these need to be installed 
one month at a time. You'll notice in this video, I have highlighted some changes happening to the Google Play Store and the Google Play Services application. Now, the easiest way to check for updates on these is to first launch into the Settings app, then dive into the Apps section, show all of our apps, and then make sure that you find the setting that allows you to show system apps. Then from here, we scroll through this list until we find the app labeled Google Play Services. We tap onto that, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and in the app details entry, it'll tell us that we have installed this from the Play Store. So go ahead and tap on that. And again, if you have an update waiting for you, then tap on that update button from there. Now, if you're looking to manually update the Google Play Store application, we launch that app, look in the top right corner and tap on your profile picture and then dive into the settings area from here. Then we're gonna tap on the about drop-down menu and right there you should see a button labeled update play store. We tap it. If you have a new version waiting for you to install, you will be told that a new version will be downloaded and installed and we can just confirm from there. If not, and if your version is already up to date, then again, you'll be told in that pop-up window that you are already on the latest version. If your device is not eligible for either of these two updates, then you can choose to manually update these via APK files downloaded from a trusted source, like APK Mirror or APK Pure or any other APK repository that you are familiar with and that you trust. With not much going on last week, Google has really stepped up and started rolling out some good features with these updates. I am personally curious to see how the remote uninstall feature works out and the live video experience for emergency calls definitely sounds like something that could be useful. For now, I gotta ask that you look below this video and click on that like button, and then subscribe to the channel too, since I'm noticing only 4% of my views are currently coming from subscribers.